And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Silverwood Grove, which was a Kickstarter game that many people, including myself, backed likely because it has really cute artwork. This company has done several other games. I'm not sure I played any of the other ones, but they have the same kind of uh, artwork that's a vibe of the different uh, animals on the Australian Outback and cartoonish and fun. I mean, this is a great looking cover here. The idea of this game is that you, uh, I don't even know what the idea of the game is, you're building a grove and you have a character and you're recruiting other animals and they're working in business offices. Well, whatever. That's not a big deal. But you're going to be paying resources to hire people, build buildings, upgrade them, to get victory points over 10 rounds. Let's show how it plays and you better watch the video for how it plays and then we'll be back. At the beginning of the game, you're going to give each player two characters from a whole set of characters. These characters are going to tell you your starting resources in each of the different spots, some talents and special abilities that they might have, and you're also going to take the Unite card that matches this Tree Frog is from Dane Tree, so you'll take the Unite card that matches them. You get a board here, you set it up. You put out a bunch of uh, different employees that you can hire and a bunch of locations that you can hire. Each person gets a wheel. That wheel's placed in front of them with the collect trade on the side up. One player goes first, and you're just going to go around the table over 10 rounds. On a round, you get five actions. You have a way to increase your actions, but at the beginning of the game, you have five actions. An action is taking one of the two actions at the top of your wheel, so collect or trade, or you can click it one direction, uh, one spot in either direction for a wheel. So let's say I wanted to go to build an upgrade. That'd be one, two, then I take the build action three. If I want to collect, I go back here for four and then take that action for five or something like that. Now, what are the actions? Well, collect and trade. You can collect a resource of your choice or you can trade one resource for two of another. Not sure why the second one exists. It's gonna be used very, very rarely. You can also increase your research and development by paying one of each resource to move these down. You're going to move them down on your, your character to get different special abilities that that character has. You're going to move them down here and develop. Once you get to the bottom, you now have your Unite ability. And when you get to the bottom of this one, you now have your Talent ability, in which case a tree frog is somebody else's um, that they might have. So the Water Dragon pays four resources, take the top three locations, build one, returning the remainder, get a victory point and an action point, turn to the other side. So that's kind of, there's all kinds of different abilities that they're going to have. But you're also going to want to hire people. So when you hire someone, this person's hired for any two resources. And when you hire them, you'll put them in front of them. They're going to be worth points at the end of the game. This one provides this feather resource, which uh, more is like a prerequisite because many of the buildings, which is another action you can take, will require them. So this one requires that you have a writer and it also requires these two symbols, which means I need to have this here and this on the second spot here to build the uh, university here. And then it also costs those resources. But it is 10 victory points. So you're going to be hiring these people and building them. You can also um, promote them, which means you pay the same number of resources again. And you flip it over. And it might give you a better benefit, but it also, in this case, it just increases the victory points. The same thing, you can upgrade a building and they'll usually give you a better special ability that you have involved. And so that's pretty much the game. You're just gonna be hiring these people and upgrading them. There's a lot of different points involved here. They'll give you special abilities. The buildings are more points than the employees, but the buildings have more prerequisites. Like I don't think you can build a building on turn one unless you have some sort of special ability that lets you do that. You'll be keeping track of your score with a token that matches your character on here. And at the end of the game, whoever has the most points is the winner. You will get extra points for research and development, um, but you're not gonna know what those points are because they're not in the rule book and not in the boards and you have to go online to an FAQ to figure out what they are. All right, the component quality here of the cards is really well done and the artwork. People are going to buy this game, and I'm definitely one of them, who was attracted by the very cute artwork. I think it's great. The quality of the cards is good. The, the board, you know, you're able to put the cubes on, although there's some weird decisions like place it up here. Why not just have a zero on these tracks? But um, I'm pretty happy with the components. There's a few okay components using these tokens 
They're okay tokens. There's some extra cards for weather and things in there. I'm not convinced that this is the best way to handle this. Um, maybe cards might have been better. I'm not sure. But it, And there's even a... a uh, family version on the back here if you just want to play kind of a very simple game but it seems like it works fine so for the most part the components are good with one exception I often have people ask me to do like the 10 worst rule books you've ever read and I've gone through so many bad rule books that it'd be hard to tell but guess what we have a contender here for worst rule book ever. And I'm just gonna tell you flat out right now, I recommend that you don't get this game based on this one fact alone. Yes, some people, there's an extensive FAQ online, and yes, there's a person I went and read, someone rewrote the rule book and did a much better job. Um, and we'll come back and talk about the game in a second, but this rule book is abysmal. I could not figure out how to play the game from it. I had to go online and look at things. For example, uh, the, your action wheel, when you turn it, can you turn it to any spot you want or can it only turn one click in each direction? That's a pretty big thing. Those developments, I mentioned the victory points there. They're not mentioned anywhere. It just says score victory points for them. That's pretty major. How did you miss that? I, I think you can figure out how to play the game from this rule book, maybe, but you're kind of guessing. And I find that very problematic. I cannot recommend that because people are gonna go out and buy this and get this rule book and not know how to play the game. That's just, it's atrocious to me. And I want people to go out and put, you know, buy games and have fun playing them. And you're not going to taking this into account. So let's, again, I just can't recommend the, the game on that basis alone. But let's go buy the fixed rule book, the FAQ and everything else. And I still don't really like the game. It's just not interesting. It's just move cubes up, get resources, buy stuff. You say, Tom, that's many games. Yeah, but this one, in my experience, is remarkably lucky and unbalanced. First of all, it's just not interesting. There's even a little bit of take that stuff. You know, I steal some resources from you. You're literally stealing actions from other players. But it's like, move the resources. Oh, I want to build that person. Oh, well, they need these resources and this requirement. Fine. Click, click. Move up my development. Click, click. Hire that person. Oh, wait a minute. That's two. That's over two rounds. And the game just feels really slow. It doesn't feel like you're making any really interesting choices. You look at the special ability of your character. You go, that's what I'm going to get it. This one, like the one I showed you, the tree frog, is like, get Dane tree creatures. All right, I will, because otherwise I'm wasting the special ability. You get those creatures if they're available. If they're not available, you have a, the other players have a leg up on you and they're going to do better than you. And so this game feels like there's some good ideas in there. But the clicking the wheel action and turning it and spending an action to do that isn't fun. When you only have five actions and you need to you know, do something that requires you to click it two spaces in one direction, taking two of your five actions and you probably need to spend one or two of those actions getting resources, you don't really do a lot on one-tenth of the game. And then when someone else manages, and it has happened every time I played this, someone is, manages to get an employee that gives them an extra action, an extra two actions, an extra some extra resources, and they have an advantage on everybody else, and that compounds dramatically. And the game itself isn't silly and light. I mean, it's silly and it is light, but it's not a silly, light, quick game. There's some time invested in this game. There's special abilities. If you play young people, you're gonna have to go through all those special abilities, and then there's the Unite thing. And that, coupled with the horrible rule book, is gonna make this a huge turnoff for people who are looking for a lighter game, and for people who might be looking for a more strategic game, it's gonna be turned off because there is, it, it has the veneer of all this strategy, but it's not there. This game is kind of a failure here because I can see what they're shooting for. This is the, hey, we're gonna play this game. This is a fun family game where you hire things. Think of Everdell where you get characters and things. I mean, I really feel that kind of vibe here and I wanna like it. I'm like, oh, the wheel action in my head sounded kind of interesting. Spending resources to get things and upgrade them for points and special abilities. I like that in games. Some of my favorite games are engine builders, but this one just felt like it was unplay tested.
And I think it was because there's no way anyone will allow that rule book to see the light of day. There's no way someone didn't read that rule book and go, well, how many points do you get at the end of the game for your tech tree? Is it one, two, three? It's like, I think it's one, three, and six. Why? And that, with the game being kind of on rails, but also having a lot of text, it's just messy. It's messy. And someone needed to sit down and say, no, this is messy. We can clean this. There's a good game hiding somewhere in there. And it frustrates me when I can't find it. Because I want games to be good. I don't ever go into a game hoping it's bad. I played this hoping it would be fantastic. I thought it would be. My hopes for this were quite high. And they were dashed. It's really not that great of a game. And I know online they'll say, well, get the fixed rule book and everything. I don't feel like people should have to do that. Especially one of this magnitude. If it was just, you know, you know a couple lines. But it's like a rewrite is necessary. But even if you do have the fixed rule book, I still don't think I'd recommend it. At best, it's a mediocre game that feels wildly unbalanced and problematic and random. You add the rule book to that, and this is a no-go from me. So that's Silverwood Grode. I'm Tom Vassell. You've been watching the Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment. Worst rule book ever. Ever.